Of course it's me! He's back, he's back! <laughs> I've never felt such loneliness. Oh, my God. I know. The flags. Is... Mama? After your father died, the heart went out of her. God rest her soul. Freddy? Delphine? Both safe and well. Oh. <laughs> no. Mary! Mm -hmm. Yes, our little Delphine is going to marry. She's very happy and very much in love. Thank you, Jeanette. Oh, by the way. This is the Honorable Mrs. Anthony Longbridge and Annie. Your granddaughter. Oh, she looks just like Freddy. Oh, we're blessed with miracles. I notice that the smaller vineyards have lost acres of vines from neglect, and you know, without some help from the bank, will probably fail. Never mind, the treasure will save Valmont. Let's get rid of that. Did I frighten you, Bruno? No. No, I was just uh, surprised. I arrived this morning. We must have a glass of champagne. Yes, of course. Why not a pink champagne, Bruno? A pink champagne from a good vintage. The kind your grandfather took such pride in. The best, Marcel. You sound strange, Father. Not yourself, not at all. You see this? My father gave me this when I left for war in 1914. I used it this morning to open the treasure. I don't have to tell you what I found. No, don't give yourself the trouble. A half million bottles, gone. I used them as any intelligent man. While you were having your soft war in London, tagging after your courageous general, never seeing a German, I did what I had to. And for whom did you have to do this? The family. 
I had no option. The Germans insisted they knew all about it. You're lying. No one knew. Well, that says it, maybe. Leave here. Leave Champagne. Gladly. And leave France. Never. This is my country. You have no country from this time onwards. Unless you do leave France, I will expose you. You dishonor your country and your name. It's your name too, don't forget. You would do anything to protect it. You were wrong. I will do anything to get rid of you! <laughs> Yes, you would do that too, wouldn't you? I took the bullets out. Oh, I thought of using it on you earlier. But I want you to live, knowing that as long as you live, you can never again return to France. So go! 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 Freddy, it's a holiday, that's all. This heat has probably taken its toll on poor Jock, too. <laughs> I don't want to hear another excuse. I came here to get paid. Hey, now, wait a second. No, Look, I'm not you here listen to, to me. It. Oh, there he is, in trouble I'm again. I'm not here to discuss it. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's go see Uncle Chuck. Hey, wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, now give me one more week, okay? You got one week? Or you got no plane? Yeah. Annie, Annie, look at you. Oh, what a big girl you are. <laughs> oh, thanks for coming, Tony. <laughs> well, you know the rules. Just to look around and then back home, Yank. Oh. Look, I don't know how you dragged him out of the muck, but whatever you did, it was worth it, partner. <laughs> you heard the commander. Just one look. Oh, come on. We know different, don't we? Huh? So, uh, what do you think of the flying greengrocer? Well, I know you're in on the ground floor of a whole new industry, but how do you expect to make it if you're not flying? I finished the run an hour ago, San Jose and back. A half a ton of tomatoes and a ton of onions. When's your next run? Day after. I'm waiting on lemons for Frisco, flowers for Illinois. Tony, I need more planes. I need some help from people I can trust. I need to lease at least three more planes. Just imagine this. Three DC-3s loaded to the gills, delivering produce and everything else that's worth getting in a hurry to New York, Boston, Chicago. You Yanks do too much imagining. Well, why don't you try it, huh? Come in with me. We'll be partners. We'll all be together again. We're just visiting, Jock. Okay, then just visit for a year. Ah, oh. oh, Tony! <laughs> oh, terrific! Terrific! <laughs> Post-war opportunities are creating one of the biggest booms this country has ever seen, V. Cold. Sound investment as the bouquet of a fine wine, wouldn't you say? Yes, Mr. Tash. My wife and I often enjoy your Chateau Belmont. It's a shame more Americans don't appreciate champagne. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're a beer and pretzel country, we call it. Well, I did not come in from London to discuss champagne, Mr. Tash. Have you received my letter? Oh, yes, of course, Vicomte. How much did you want to invest? 
20 million dollars. Naturally, if more is needed, then that's available. 20 million in California is a hell of a commitment. Just be sure that you keep it away from those half-baked movie makers. And with your uh, investment success in London, I'm sure that we can get as many investors as you want to go in with you. I'm not interested, and uh, my participation should be kept quiet. Do you understand? Well, yes, of course, as you wish. My wife and I traveled in Europe extensively before the war. You must hate being away from France. The discussion is over, Mr. Tash. Your attempt at familiarity bores me. Where's our lady of the DC-3s this morning? Salinas Valley Produce Association for two days. We can make a daily run full both ways if she gets the contract. Supervise Annie this. Supervise Annie that. Read her to sleep tonight, gone flying. She'd never have done this back home, not in a million years. She said she tried to wake you, but you were out cold. Freddie hasn't touched down in a week. I got lonesome and had a few. You'd have done the same, old boy. <laughs> Tony. We have got five planes with two more coming. She's doing a hell of a job. You're a lucky man, or maybe you don't know it. I'll put a sock in it, Jock. She hasn't been the same since she set foot in California. But if she owns the whole bloody world. Oh, hello, Brenda. Honey. Uh, come upstairs a minute. I want to show you something. Did you see the prospectus on the two new planes? Well, of course I did. I thought you did a marvelous job. Thank you. I'm right in here. Winged eagles can handle as much as you can grow. Wholesalers all over the country are clamoring for California fruit, vegetables, and flowers. If your produce is as good as you brag about, they'll pay premium dollars. And air shipping will look mighty cheap. Haybrook Farms took a bath on those ripe tomatoes to New York. It uh, seems one of your DC-3s felt like staying in Kansas for two days. <laughs> <laughs> We do break down sometimes. But did Haybrook tell you how much money they're making when we don't break down? Well, no, they don't reveal that. <laughs> we had surplus melons and lettuce, but no buyer. If you come up with one, I'll try it. You bring me a ton tomorrow at 2, and I'll get you a buyer. Or I'll eat them myself. <laughs> <laughs> Armand can't be here. He's doing this film. Next year, we'll all meet in Champagne. Are you suggesting that there's not enough room here? No. Yes, you are. Oh, I know we've got to get a bigger place. I'm sick of rented furniture. I want my own home. I just haven't had any time to look with the business growing like it has. Would you look at our children? They are so different. So are our husbands. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm not going to allow Lauren to date till she's 20. You remember what I was like when I was young? Oh. I was a living horror. <laughs> I'm going to watch her like a hawk. Where's Tony? 
And he's not going to wait till midnight to blow out these candles. Yeah, he's working late. Jack promised me he'd collect him and get him here on time. He's still flying in bad weather. Well, how does it feel to be a successful businesswoman? <laughs> I'm trying to be a good wife, too, but it's hard. Do you know things were going to be wonderful between you and Armand from the very beginning? I was mad about him from the second I laid eyes on him. I nearly blew it after the war, feeling guilty about Bruno and the rape. I followed your advice, and I told him everything. He wanted to kill Bruno. Why did you stop him? I don't know. <laughs> uh. My life's different from me. I love Annie and Tony so much. But when I can't get home to be with them every single night, I feel like I'm doing everything wrong. <laughs> Voila! Your daughter is waiting to blow out her birthday candles. <laughs> well, I'm celebrating here tonight where I can count on the company. Get on your feet. Come on, get on your feet. Come on. Hey, where are you going? <clears throat> Fool. Look at you. You're married to an incredible woman and you are blowing it. <laughs> Tell me about it. Will you... In front of me. It kills me to see you throwing it away. You've always been obsessed with Freddy. You're in love with her, aren't you? Freddy, look, I'm I'm sorry about tonight. Uh, you better go on without Tony. He uh, got caught up in something. We already have. As you may know, the bank has been under some financial pressure, but I'm happy to say that an attractive offer has been made for its purchase and all is well. As a result of all of this, I think I can say that you may count on the loan for your firm, Winged Eagles. You mean you're not at all concerned about the cancellation of the government contract? <laughs> well, well, I think you're going to be very pleasantly surprised to find out that your brother has made a substantial offer to buy this bank. The bank and the family, I don't think you have anything to worry about as far as your loan is concerned. Yes. Oh, good. Send him in. Aha. Nice to see you. Ready? I hoped you'd still be here. You look well. Hmm? So, from now on, you'll be doing business with me. This firm of yours, Winged Eagles, sounds like it could be you a very... You listen to me, Bruno. You keep your dirty hands off, Winged Eagles. 
Mrs. Longbridge. Mr. Armstrong, ask him just how he made his fortune and how he ruined his family. Ask him. Just ask him what he did to my sister. I don't do business with Nazi collaborators. I don't do business with the man who raped my sister. Little lady, you remind me of someone I once knew. I'm not a little lady. Oh. Annie, why don't you wait outside and read a book? I'm just beginning to break the ice with Mr. Castelli. Annie? Mom? That's your picture. Who's that man with his arm around you? An old friend. Boy, I remember when we were so busy planning stunts, I used to sleep in this office. One film right after the other. Well, flying pictures are out for the time being. I like jitterbugging. Mm, I'm sorry. Ah, Freddy, what a life. Here I am, sitting on my duff, nothing to do but look after my investments. Huh? Oh, yeah. Back in the good old days, I bought land, restaurants, gas stations, you name it. And it all turned to gold. I am bored. Boy, have I got a job for you. No, no, not in that air cargo outfit of yours. John Campton wasn't the only veteran to have ideas about air cargo. Three or four of them have gone bust this year alone. Swede, it's the future. And winged eagles will make it. Oh, what makes you so sure? I want you to run winged eagles. Our problem is too much business too fast. Oh, you're gonna have more damn fun trying to figure out our mess. And maybe I can straighten out mine. Well, what do we use for money? Well... Oh, mine, I guess, knowing you. Okay, if you insist. Ah, oh, come on, you said you had more than you need. Ah, what the hell? Count me in. Ah, oh, sweet, thank you. <laughs> I love you. Like that house? Actually, yes. That is probably the only kind of house that looks absolutely right in California. We need a new house, don't we? Come on, come with me. Come on. I'm assuming you've already bought it. Everything is going terrific since we went in charge, right? Well, I went out and found this place. It's ship shape from top to toe. All systems working, checked out, and ready to be lived in. Charming. Really charming. Where's the bar? There's no bar. But I did think of something. Lonsdale. Cheers. You don't think it's too big, do you, Tony? Because when we have more children and we entertain, it, it won't seem nearly as big. So you have all that already planned, do you? What's wrong with dreaming about the future? I was hoping I could do this drunk, although Dutch courage never works for me. 
particularly an offer for this. You don't like the house? This? This is precisely the sort of thing you do that I cannot endure. Here's your whole cocked up life, Tony. Compliments of Freddy. Your dreams are tomorrow's facts. I'm incidental. I'm your bloody consort. We're wrong together, Freddy. We're dead wrong. You must have had a few since you woke up this morning. If you could hear yourself, you'd be so ashamed. I've been ashamed for years. I'm almost used to it. You take over everything, Freddy, don't you? You took over our lives the minute we moved here six years ago. If it hadn't been for you, we'd have been busting back in England in six months. But you were invincible, unbeatable, as always. You, Jock, and Swede made winged eagles work. I've been excess baggage from the beginning. Tony, stop it. How could you be so horribly unfair? I, I couldn't have made it without you. <laughs> Tony, please tell me what went wrong. We have nothing in common except Annie in the old days. It's not enough. I want a divorce. Mom, you've got to get dressed. I don't know why I said I'd go, Annie. Why don't you call Jock and tell him I'm sick? I will not. You've told me never to lie. Why do you remember that, when I also told you to obey your mother no matter what? Oh, Mom, really? I mean, you've been a hermit ever since Daddy went back to England. I mean, people get divorced. I don't deserve this. You're heartless. No, I'm not. I'm being sensible. Now pull yourself together and get dressed. And if you don't smile, you know how Jock's going to feel. It's not a real date anyway, so just pretend. This looks like it should be part of the red roof. Yeah, it does. Ah, uh -huh, it is. Look. Good, good. Okay, let's see, treetops. This is as good as it gets. Wow. Wow is right. You're a dream. Mommy, how old do I have to be before I get to wear a dress like that? Old. Very, very old, Annie. <laughs> come on, gorgeous. I'm not your date, Jock. I only agreed to come with you because you said you needed a wingman to protect you. OK, OK. Mm -hmm. Awful. Come on, it's just a reunion. Why did I say yes? That music. Shall we? Jock. Jock! Hey! Hey, guys! Hey! Good to see <laughs> you again! Hey, I'm glad you could make it. Good, it's Freddie. This is my wife, Kat. Hi, nice to meet you. Freddie, you film a picture. 43. Guys, can I have your attention, everybody? You guys remember when we used to fall out of our kites and drop our chutes? We used to drink that uh, warm English beer. And remember how we used to sing until we fell down? So 
we could get the strength to do it all again the next day? And you remember that sometimes there would be a girl there that would sing those great old war songs? <laughs> First officer at Atlanta, come on up here. Come on. Help save these guys. I knew you'd want to do it for the boys. We've got all the music. I'll bet you have. Upset you, I just didn't think. Well, you certainly thought of everything else. Come on, you were terrific in there. I didn't think I could ever sing those words again. Let go. There's nothing wrong with being the way you used to be. Never just talk, except about business. Just talk? Yeah. Oh, about anything. 